Hello, and good morning. So we're going to be starting here in just a second. I'm just uh, doing the last check on audio, and we should be good to go. So just a sec here. Alrighty, there we go. Uh, looks like we are all solid on audio here. Sounds about right. Let's see. Oh, chat isn't working right. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and get that fixed real quick. That's unacceptable. Uh, there we go. Let's go to the chat thingy. Let's see if we do this type thing. It's going to lag a whole bunch. That should hopefully cause it to come back. Let's see. And good morning to you too as well, Mr. Cow. Okay, why? Okay, let's uh, let's just redo the chat entirely. Hang on, let's uh, remove that. Let's get a new chat box in here. The uh, the wonderful world of Streamlabs. <laughs> uh, hang on, uh, where is my delay? Sorry, I'm trying to find where the hell the chat box is. Here we go. Got to add a new chat box. All right, stop lagging, please. And hopefully there we go. Hopefully it'll come back to life now. Uh, oh. Go back to your spot, OB64. I don't know why I didn't lock you in place. <laughs> ah, so how's everyone's morning going? Are we going alright? Having a pretty decent one? All that kind of stuff. Actually, yeah, let's lock that game in place there. Let's get this chat box moved over here. And let's test. See if that's popping up now. One of those unfortunate little, uh... Let's test some dealies here. Nope. That's not making it pop up. Uh, bits. Nope, that's not making it. It's not making it pop up either. God dang it. Such is life. Such is life. Uh, but yeah. So, uh, so yeah, let's see. Uh, her ability is... <laughs> is great than a wizard. <laughs> Does the mod crew need a proofreader to fix all the errors? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's a few, a few of us here that would, uh... That would probably be willing to do so. Uh, but yeah, just trying to get the chat box fixed here. Uh, it's saying that it's fixed. That's a weird part. Um, I might have to turn it off and on again. I hope not, because I just literally turned it off and on again to fix all this. Um, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> See, have you done the tutorial and seen Deneb and OB64? That I have. Uh, we can actually, you know what? Might as well just run the tutorial, why the hell not? Uh, since we're going ahead and uh, testing stuff here anyway, let's just fiddle around with some of this, some of these bars here, see if that makes it show up. Uh, refresh browser when it comes active. You know what? Sure, let's see if that fixes. Ooh, God, that lag though. That lag is god awful. Um, yeah, I don't know why the chat box ain't appearing. Make you disappear and reappear. Maybe if I move you over here, you'll suddenly be okay. Come on, chat box. I believe in you. You can do it. You can do it! Alright, let's, uh, let's run that tutorial real quick while we're waiting for the chat to appear. Maybe if I go ahead and refresh this deal, it'll come back to life. It's like, it's literally just like, you just go down the list of whatever you can mess with, as far as I'm aware, to get all that chat to come back. Alright, and we go to the tutorial. Let's do this thing. Like, oh, choose tutorial. Oh, by the way, legions have been added. Okay. I'll tell you everything about legions. Uh, legion usage. I wonder if there's just something that we've completely missed this entire time that is just like, legions are amazing. Here you go. Uh, the intro on Lotus basically boils down to the Black Queen from March of the Black Queen was right. Pretty dang much. I mean, all things considered, if March of the Black Queen, like, if Destin failed in that one, I mean, it's arguable that they would be in a better position, but... <laughs> anyway, um, let's see here. We'll explain the use of legions. Show me. First, we dispatch one. They're dispatched the same way as units. Cool. Well, we're already dispatched. Auto. So it's going to go here, and it's going to slowly explain everything. So, woo! Legions dispatched. All right. So they're all expanded and everything. Legion symbol is played to the thing, indicates Legion which the unit belongs to. Cool, let's see this mechanic in action. Maximum you can deploy is 10, we knew that. There's no limit to the number of times a uh, Legion can be dispatched, but the total number of units cannot exceed 10. Phew. 
Oh, chat's appearing. Yes, it exists. Okay, perfect. We can uh, we can just go ahead and just do the tutorial and then move the hell on here. Beautiful. So yeah, Legion made up units called Legion Corps and Legion Divisions. The number of Legion Divisions to make up a Legion is determined by the number of soldiers in Legion Corps. Please see Legion Commands for more details. Okay, cool. You're still not telling me if there's any way in game that's been hidden this whole time. Uh, a symbol to the left of its name. Cool. Like, I'm literally just going through this tutorial hoping that maybe they tried to explain it somewhere. Or if they're going to be like, oh man, no, look, they were totally good right away. But they're attacking stuff with no armor. Oh man, they're so strong, though. <laughs> okay, so they're going to go ahead. I love how this tutorial just, like, runs itself. Uh, also, it seems like Mobile Wall is hands down the worst way you could possibly handle this. Let's see, the direction facing Legion is depending on Legion Core. When they change directions, they change accordingly. Okay, cool. So... Right, so they're basically saying run into stuff. Oh, never mind. I'm just going to run into stuff w with the wings like this. Speed is determined by the number of units. Okay. Yeah, I'm explaining Legion plans. Okay, and they exchange units, so they can just basically shuffle their dudes back and forth. Okay, so we go here. Like, liter I'm, I'm literally just saying if there's something hidden that we miss. Formation and placement. And I guess this does technically allow you to maybe instantly move stuff around. Okay, so I'm pretty sure they just walk to the area where the other one's supposed to be. Oh, please tell me you're not going to go ahead and explain every single one of these. Oh man, you're actually going to explain every single one of these. Okay. Slant it to the right advances while deflecting enemies. I don't know if they deflect so good, but alright. Vertical line that extends to the top and bottom, well suited for passing through narrow terrain. Also, very useful for uh, forcing one guy to go completely carry the entire thing. Uh, wedge formation that parts them units, prone to danger because this limits Legion Corps at this place is Legion Corps at the front. Yeah, I don't know why you'd ever use this. Um, okay. Do a wedge and assault formation that stresses defense. Safety is increased because the place is Legion Corps further behind. Good. Yeah, exactly. You'd never want to use the others. V shaped funnel. Designed to defeat enemies without fail. That's adorable. Okay, and then the last one is also a bad idea. Increases mobility by placing them at the front. I don't know how much mobility it actually increases, to be honest. Let's see, does the Neb use sorcerer's magic or witch magic gears by hacking her in for a pumpkin run? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, apparently the game actually just crashes if you do that, though. Like, uh, you can, you can actually do that with the save editor, but I, like... Bear in mind, I haven't tested this, but I've read somewhere that you can, uh, that doing so will essentially cause the game to crash. Oh, they, okay, they explain this, interesting, they, I wonder if they're gonna explain, uh, that there's a little bit of a trick that you can do with legions, um, that I wonder if they're gonna explain in the intro here, where if you just go and change their formation, uh, in the middle of a thing, like, for example, say you have them doing the whole D formation, then you switch them to W, they will move far faster than they should ever be able to if, uh, if you tell them to uh, to move that way. Meaning that you can potentially get some units into an area faster, so like with some tricky use you might be able to turn them into a death blender. You can't exchange units between peoples. Okay. Nifty, nifty, nifty. Now, this has really taken a really long time to explain. Also, that is one seriously dumb group you have over there. You got birds and samurai and crap and in one? Why are you doing that? <laughs> Why would you do that? See, I've seen Deneb in the past. Back in the early 2000s, she counts as the opinion leader, so it's game over choice. Oh! Okay. And yeah, Sphinx designed to defeat enemies without fail. Yeah. They can apparently near one-shot dudes more than twice their levels, so yeah, that'll do it real good. Also, I just noticed something else. This Legion is cheating. <laughs> They're using a Slepner. <laughs> They've got the Slepner right at the start of the game. Uh, describe the merits of the Legion. Yeah, you gotta be like friggin' 80 or whatever to get the Slepner too, so... There's no way somebody's finding that <laughs> normally. What? Then again, maybe there's some other way to do it. Okay, are its special characteristics in the in control multiple units at once? A particular example would be the existence of different formations. Uh, affects the retreat direction of defeated enemy units, and that influx. Okay, you know what? That makes sense. That makes sense. So you can have an exact, uh, 
you can have an exact place you want them to go. Special characteristics such as ability to accept supporting supportive attacks with soldiers, and the ability to recover all units within the Legion simultaneously. Ah, okay, gotcha. True, I, I already did test that before, but... See, there are no actual change in visible range. It's easier to see the enemy, though, because more units. Okay. Caution about using legions is uh, they, they change according to the legion core. Okay. So is this going to say anything? If a soldier who is placed in a legion core dies and the total number of soldiers falls below the number of legion divisions, the legion will not be able to maintain itself. The unit will be forced to depart. Okay. Gotcha. Wow. <laughs> They're so bad that they just disappeared immediately. Okay, destruction of the core means everybody's unique, right? Okay, of course. But can a Legion power nap? They can. They totally can. They can power nap real hard. Wait, that's it? That's it? Okay, so yeah, the, the attack soldiers are not even meant to be... Yeah, okay. They're not meant to be anything. I was curious whether the tutorial would actually say if they were meant to do anything. And no, apparently they're not. Um... They are designed to suck on purpose. So, let's go ahead and start a new game then. Now, I was uh, I was kind of piecing together what I wanted to go uh, go with for the name on this. Uh, for the better part of the last like week and a half now, like ever since the, uh, the Steve run died. And, um, and yeah, I I'm just going to go ahead and ask for some opinions on this. Because at first I was thinking, you know what? Th this is just going to have to be like the main character is, is Time Cop and then... You know, you just basically have the order of time cops. Except then was thinking, you know what? They're basically dealing with some uh, some weird temporal shenanigans. They're here to go deal with all kinds of bizarre creatures and a bunch of stuff that can one-shot units, apparently. So maybe the, maybe Mag Magnus's name should just be Commander and it's the order of XCOM? But I don't know. I don't know. So uh, basically I'm going to play this uh, trying to try to avoid the mistakes of last time. Um, and yeah, just try to make it all the way to the end without any revives. So, to cover the rules, if a unit dies at any point, there is no reviving them, if they are just dead. It's functionally a Nuzlocke run in everything but name, um, simply because I really can't guarantee that I get one unit per map, so, you know. Um, but yeah, so, Nuzlocke in everything but name, and then, um, and then yeah, I'm not doing any birthday shenanigans unless they come up. So if, if his birthday comes up naturally, you know, we're going to go to it. Um, I'm not going to try to go do any excessive grinding or anything else. We're just going to, you know, go fight to fight to fight to fight. And, and yeah, like, if there's anything that's, like, available at any given time, feel free to mention it. Uh, not too worried about spoilers, because I'm trying to, exp to as, uh, as, as Mr. Vale suggested, go through the game and explore it in a, in a new way here. So, uh, yeah. Holy crap! Thank you, Mr. Rafik! Thank you very, very much! That's out of nowhere. Wasn't expecting that one. <laughs> well, nice to see you there. Huh. That's, uh, that's a new one. So, uh, yeah. Then, um... Yeah, that's kind of how it goes there. So, uh, yeah. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and move on, uh, as we go. So, he has learned the way of the Soren God's teachings, and according with the traditions, because of the progenitor guy, you're now getting an oath. And, uh, yeah, go... Where well, you're gonna go swear to your mother. And you can do this intro in... Well, what, first of all, what do you guys think? What, what are we going with for the name? What do you guys think? Like, are we just calling... I'm very tempted to just call him Commander. <laughs> he is just Commander Gallant. Like, I, like, that guy, that is a name right there. That is a name that people will follow. So, uh, yeah, at some point, I believe at a couple points it's actually referred to as Commander, so he, he would be Commander Commander. Holy crap, what? Hello there, Mr. Rafik. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's a number. Holy crap. Thank you much, Rafik. <laughs> oh, Obsidian Sphinx. Wow, that is, that is strong right there. Man, thank you so much, man. I'm actually kind of speechless on that. <laughs> Do we have enough letters to make Obsidian Sphinx happen? The Order of Rafig? Yes. Th that has to be it now. Oh. 
Okay, Obsidian Sphinx. Um, actually, we can probably hang on. Let's let's uh. Da -da -da. Let's go Obsidian Sphinx. Let's see if that'll fit. And then yeah, Order of Rafig. Definitely. He's our benefactor for this run. <laughs> Donates pine cones, man. That is a lot of pine cones, though. Where'd you even find him this time of year? The obsidian. Oh, wait, whoops. He's the Shanks. He's become a Pokemon. Uh, Sphinx. There we go. <laughs> My bad. Uh. Sphinx? Uh. Hang on. We need to. We need to get rid of that space. Get, uh, get space limitations going on. Alright, and then if we pop that sucker right here, and. Sphinx! Yes, we got Obsidian Sphinx. Perfect. Here's Obsidian Sphinx Galant. Alright. What is the date of your birth? Uh, I mean, he was born today, so I think that's, uh, that's probably a good one. Born on January 26th. In our day of Rafig. <laughs> Alright, Obsidian Sphinx Galant. What do you hold within your sword? Uh, this guy sounds like he holds a Friggin' like, huh? This guy sounds like I don't know. It's either talent or hatred for this guy. Like, I mean, he's the Obsidian Sphinx. See, the Order of Sorcerers great than Wizard. <laughs> uh, man, that'd be pretty awesome, actually. Ah, <laughs> uh, but yeah, Mr. Rafig, uh, if, if you're here. Do you want the, do you want it named after you or do you want uh, do you want another name here? What do you think? I must know. Ah, uh, yeah, this guy. I don't know. I think Obsidian Sphinx. This guy probably holds some dang talent in, in his weapon right here. It's like, man, he's real good. I just love how much this intro can be seen as completely dirty. By the way, uh, what do you sever with it? Um. <laughs> Hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't think this is a guy that's down to be controlled very much, so... He's gonna go... Oh, he's gonna go sever some fries. <laughs> very true. Would you beseech for the gods? Uh, this... Hmm. He probably wants... Let's see, he... No, it. He's the Obsidian Sphinx. He needs sacrifices. He wants the gods to sacrifice to him. Alright, and... What do you offer them? Uh... I mean, he, he can get down for the gods here. Um, he'll give him a hug. He'll give them a hug. Sounds good. Man, I love this. I love this intro. <laughs> These choices make so bizarrely little sense. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, what do you wish for? I wish for... You know, Serenity probably sounds pretty good. Um, let's... I mean, he's the Obsidian Sphinx, so fertility, presumably he's just got infinite fertility already. Uh, peace, not his way. Reform, I mean, he could be looking to pass some legislation. Uh, government's still technically shut down for now, though. Uh, wealth? Uh, no, nah, he's already got plenty. I'm sure he's just got a ton of gold chains under that fur. Um, so he probably wants some serenity. He just wants a little bit of peace in his day. He's tired of people invading his dang castles. He's over here trying to train all his grunts. Some dang challenge runners are showing up, and they're trying to just get all up in his business. What are you going to get rid from this land? Uh, chaos. Because he basically went and eliminated uh, Steve, so... <laughs> he's the one who eliminated Steve. Uh, who do you call upon for help? I'm gonna go with water uh, for two reasons. Uh, for one, it is cold as crap outside. Uh, for another thing, it's actually the only one that I didn't get to see last time because I actually don't uh, didn't end up getting the uh, water pendra. So all right. Actually, wait, I didn't get the holy pendra either. But there's that. Upon my departure, I dispo dis dispose of these gifts. Wow. Okay, we got an axe. We got some maces. We got a marionette. Oh, so we can get a doll master right off the bat. We can get a. Um... What are they, monk, shaman, whatever, the upgraded priest right off the bat, technically. Uh, once we get their stats, Robe of the Wise. Ooh. Alright, this guy gave us some stuff. This guy gave us some good things. Good things. Alright. Was reading the non-fiction griffin mythology books, and in, at least according to them, the Sphinx, as, uh, as we think of it, evolved from the Hyra Sphinx, which came from Egyptian, the Egyptian griffin. Interesting. Huh. I didn't know that uh, Egyptians actually did the whole griffin thing. Alright, and we go off on our adventure. Go off to train. Have our little boot camp moment. 
Feels like we need some uh, make a man out of you playing in the background of this. <laughs> I don't want it to get muted. Ah, uh, now, if I'm not mistaken here, these guys actually all will like yours. In the intro, I think it actually uses the characters that you started with. Because, uh, uh, yeah, this looks like a different party than last time. Right? Let's see. Hyra Sphinx guarded the tombs of the pharaohs, uh, but later leaders wanted their faces to live on, so the griffins were changed to include the pharaoh's face. That's where the face thing comes from. Gotcha. Huh. Man. That makes a lot of sense now, actually. Now... What do you think the deal is with these guards, by the way? Are they just, like, uh, the grown-up versions of the soldiers? Like, do you think the basic soldiers are actually kids, or are they just weirdly scaled-down versions of that guy? Because I know that specific sprite is used several times in the game to denote a soldier, but the actual soldier unit ends up using a completely different one. Casting their gaze on the ground, trudging along. I don't know, it seemed like they were having a pretty good montage at the start there. Holy crap, Rafig, thank you! Are you feeling okay over there? That's uh, that's a that's not a small number. <laughs> Man, thank you so much. Thank you so 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 much. Yeah, you know what? I feel like this intro did change uh, last time. So hello there, Mr. Godisless. I'm sure your family will be just fine later, and you definitely won't be a bad guy. Ah. I don't know how to make my text different like that. No idea either. See, it looks like some of you are graduates from the Academy. I have no idea why you'd come to here of all places. Well, it's nice, it's quiet, it's idyllic. We've got a whole lot of mines. I mean, if you're into mining, this is your place. Um, like, we got mines every other map. We got bridges for days. We got mountains occasionally. I mean, I'm sure you've got a, uh, a guy that's uh, all upon those bridges all the time now anyway. Speaking of, how on earth did Hugo never go off to become an architect? Like that, he is the bridge master. It is his thing. So you don't know how to make, but yeah, as far as the text different thing, I think it's, I think it's a donate thing. I think that's how that works. Okay, before we start the exercise, we must get organized. Okay, Mr. Ariosh, you'll totally survive the story. Say Monolayle, Obsidian Sphinx, Diomedes, Minotaur, Leia, Alex, man. Like, this this team right here, they're just calling in the Titans right now. <laughs> this, this sounds like a team of gods right now. We were selected as command candidates. Wait in the hall. Actually, one thing I'm hoping to remember for those names later on, when you when you come back later and you start having to fight, you know, the, the different Latin, uh, Latin, uh, Palatinian uh, factions and all that, do those commander names actually come up? Because that, that, that is a very, like, over battle tactics over thing that you have your, you know, your command characters coming back. And especially for 64 and, um, and Knight of Lotus, they have multiple occasions where all of the characters that you see at the start come back later in the game. <laughs> Alright, reporting as requested. Let's go do some stuff. Yes, he sees you. He's like, yes, you look like a protagonist. You're the one I need leading things. From the Ishka Military Academy. He's not nervous. He's just afraid of how awesome he's going to be. Okay, go to ten planes and get ready for training. We'll begin as soon as everyone arrives. Baller. Like, is that it? I, I, thought, I thought we were going to go do a war or something. So while we lack strength, our knowledge and experience more than make up for it. I know about all the bridges. They are my bridges. I've known you for a long time. I have seen you on a bridge. I lived under it for quite some time. Let's get out of here. Looks like the next guy's waiting. Yep, Dio's gonna come in. He's gonna be like, man, give me my own legions. And he's gonna be like, no. So I think those are just names of your starting characters. Minotaur was, was one right. Let's find out. Yeah, Minotaur, like, that <laughs> That sounds amazing. I love that the, the character named after a freaking Minotaur is the one that comes in with the, coming in under Commander Sphinx. Ah, that's pretty awesome. Like it, oh, it, it's actually your starting... Let's see, let's see. Let's see, y'all. 
We have Taki and Bean. Um, all right, you've got soldiers. You've got Taki and hey, we got Peppermint. Nah. All right, and yeah, unless <laughs> Zemeckis, this guy's definitely uh, Polish or some such. Uh, sh okay. All righty. Uh, do we want to rearrange these a little bit? Because I kind of want these uh, frontline soldiers doing a little bit of surviving, so that seems fine. And this one, this one I feel could be a little bit different. Namely, uh, we actually have a better doll for you, I think. Or no, you just started with a marionette. But we have a better one of these. That'll just give you defense. I believe that raises his defense over time as well. Uh, that'll make your intelligence go down. Now let's just see what kind of different stuff we can give people. Um, yeah, we can give you guys some chain mail. That'll help out. Although, to be honest, it doesn't make that much of a difference because they're in the back row. Uh, you can get a better heal, and you can go ahead and uh, get an even better heal than that. Actually, some of these are using those. And uh, yeah, amulet is an improvement over your rosary, so cool beans. Uh, and yeah, class change. How about that? about that? Uh, she's able to actually change classes now. So why is it that she's able to change, but this one isn't? Hmm. Oh well. It doesn't particularly matter. Let's go go ahead and get into the fight. Let's see, uh, Dio was rude? Yeah, no, he's always rude. It's his whole shtick. Now, I think what I'm gonna do... Uh, I'd like to have uh, at least one character going through and being a good leader here. So I figure uh, Taki here, she's probably going to be the one I want to be a Centurion later. Um, just in general, I do want a Centurion, as weird as that sounds. And uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and exit then. Like, I'm, I'm fully aware Centurions technically aren't very good. But I, I do want to give a second chance to Legions, because in this case, we're going to be running a full and proper party. We're going to be actually using formations and everything else, so using, uh, using Legions, that could work. That could really work. So. We'll see how that goes. Obsidian Sphinx Galant reporting as requested. And Mr. Rang. You rang? Dio rang. And he was all like, man, I'm going I'm to shank my leader because I want, I want a leadership position. That's how you do it. Though, that being said, this is basically like the old Rome and all that, so they. You know, they did do that sometimes. Kinda sorta. At least, that's kinda how Caesar got to where he was. I mean, the guy did a hell of a lot of uh, maneuvering and stabbing and everything else. I mean, to be honest, that guy. He kinda sorta broke everything in order to put himself into power. And, uh, yeah. Caused a whole bunch of issues along the way. Ultimately, it did cause some reforms to happen, which I guess was nice. Don't fight Zio if you want to go for the good route in all Zenobians. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be locked off all Zenobians anyway. Because one thing I did want to go for is the opposite choice of last time with the uh, the Freddy execution. Because that guy basically said, hey, you don't exist anymore in the uh, ending that we got. So, uh, you know, I can be convinced otherwise. But um, I'm kind of leaning towards offing that guy early if it's actually an option. <laughs> I'm assuming they stop you. But still, you know, still, it, you know, it's something that I want to at least try, so. And we'll go ahead and end the briefing. I mean, bear in mind, this isn't going to be the last run. I plan to do a good number of runs for this game. So, there's that. Let's see, Obsidian Sphinx, you command the troops, you can handle it. This is an order. Here's one I find funny, though. He specifically gives him an order to give orders, right? And his thing is, yeah... You gave the order for that guy to follow. That guy's going to follow the order. I'm going to go shank him so I can follow the order better. <laughs> okay, don't make such a fuss about it, you hear me? You're going to get your legions later. But, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, the whole like the whole deal with Freddy there is just... Uh, to my understanding, I could have completely misunderstood it because I was kind of surprised at how weird of, a, weird of a left turn that ending took. But he literally just basically said, yeah, no, thanks for everything. Um, you are now forgotten by history. You got deleted. Goodbye. See, last time you didn't say dot dot dot. Might explain why he tried to off you later. No, I did say dot dot dot. That's, uh... 
Or no, 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 I basically refuse to do the whole execution thing. So I'm not fighting him, because I want Dio to stick around. He's, you know, whatever. He's, he's alright. But yeah, with Freddy, that dude stabbed me in the back last time. So uh, I think he can go ahead and get stabbed in the face this time. Like, oh, get a hold of yourself. Stop fighting in public. He's the protagonist. He's got way better stats than you. You can't possibly win. Why do you get so angry? Like, I'm a little bit surprised he's not immediately kicked out at this point. It's like trying to murder your commanding officer five seconds in. Like, that, that's basically court-martialing and going to friggin' Guantanamo nowadays. <laughs> More than certain. <laughs> it's like, you went ahead and yelled at your commander for a while. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, but yeah, no, um, but yeah, so yeah, the, the Freddy execution scene, literally, uh, the, whatever option it was to not follow orders on that one, that's what I did last time. So there's that. Go ahead and pause around right quick, and let's throw everybody out here. Man, I'm liking Mr. Anderson's shtick. Look at this. He's like, oh man, they're not gonna get. You know what? If I'm gonna be a wizard, I'm coming in with my dragon. <laughs> so he just comes in with his dragon. Uh, we've got some berserkers and soldiers, and then Dio. All right. You know what? We need to fix that. That need that is in dire need of repairs. So first of all, let's go ahead and change your formation around a little bit. Because for one thing, that dragon, that needs to be up front. So yeah, they're just doing a bite anyway, so you go up front. You need to be hiding behind that dragon. Does that darken there protect you? And uh, let's change some other formations here as well. Uh, Mr. Berserker, I'm glad to have you here at the very start. You can go right here, you're going to go right here, you're going to go right here. Uh, next, I need to remove a couple characters here. Namely, I'm going to give my archers... Actually, I can't give my archers... Um, Alright, for the time being, I'm going to take... No, I'm not. I'm going to take the two fighters, or at least... Yeah. I'm going to take two fighters from here. And I'm going to go give them to this Berserker. That way he's got a little bit more frontline heft to uh, keep his general frailty going. Uh, so I want all of these guys to be knights eventually, but I would like one very offensively orientated knight. And then I'm going to give Dio these uh, remaining soldiers. Holy crap, they gave me 60. You guys have not seen my track record with keeping these guys alive, have you? Um, okay. Let's change this formation around a little bit. And probably move these guys over here so that they've got a chance of a team attack. And I think... Probably move Dio up front. Because he's got the stats. And there we go. That's probably looking pretty solid. Oh, I needed to give this guy some soldiers. Commands, add a character, and then yeah, give this guy as many soldier lintons as he can carry. Namely, all of them. And we're good to go. Oh, right, I don't have the uh, L button assigned to this. Where are my options? Not here's where they are. So yeah, Mr. Anderson, you are currently my favorite unit. Now this team, or this plays down here, completely irrelevant. I'm gonna have you attack this stronghold. Actually, right, we need to take a look at morale and everything else here. So, okay, so that's gonna be their alignment. I'm assuming for this first one, everything's gonna be pretty darn good. Alignment 71. Who's good on alignment? My alignment, I'm assuming that's going to be you. Surprisingly, you're neutral. Bizarre. Neutral, neutral, neutral. Everybody's probably pretty neutral here. Alright, whatever. I'm, I'm just going to send the priest in. So, priest is going to go take that town. Uh, I'm going to have dragon go clear the forest. Uh, everybody else is going to kind of form out and do as they will. Um, Magnus's squad hopefully won't be seeing too much action here. I'm actually going to have them go watch the northern pass up here. 
Uh, Anderson, you go ahead and keep this forest clear because that ran, ran uh, his problem last time. Uh, Taki, you. You're the one going to be taking this tomb. You're going to be taking it real good. Uh, I'm going to need one other squad watching the woods. So let's say Ziegler. Actually, no, Ziegler, you're good on offense. We're going to need you to dislodge them up there. Uh, Dio, you're going to watch the woods. Alright, so let's put you here. And then lastly, Bean. I feel like we're going to send you up, uh, up to attack this town as well. So again, to clarify, uh, and to repeat all this, if any character dies at any point, they are permadeath. There's no revives, there's no any of that. Uh, no Ultra's Resurrection, no Magical Healing Soup, none of that. So, I'm, I'm curious how exactly this will go, because I feel like it should be a very solid run. Like, I feel this should be like AOL, uh, wherein it's difficult but doable. So, really looking forward to that. Alright, so he's there. See, the non dot 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 option is the one to speak up that it's wrong to kill people in berets. It's kind of like a train conductor hat, though. Like, if it has a little thingy on it, is it still a beret? I don't know. Um... I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Sometimes you find that hard leather in the woods. There's something here. I'm gonna have to talk about- talk to Mr. Bean later. And ask him to stop picking up old clothes off the ground. Alright, Dio, uh, that town's gonna get taken. I'm gonna need you to go ahead and watch the road here. Uh, you are gonna go ahead and probably put a little bit of pressure on this town, just move slightly. I, and I'm actually gonna leave the reports in first person this time, because I personally really love that touch. Like, I, I love the little reports that they do. Uh, despite the fact that, yeah, it's gonna get a little bit spammy down the road, but I really, really like it. Alright, and I tell you what, we're gonna have a little bit of a gap here, so if you watch this... Alright, that sounds good. And you know what? Mr. Sphinx, you go ahead and climb this mountain. Give me a little bit of the lay of the land here. <laughs> wow! This guy's so excited about his dragons. He's like, yes, I found a baby dragon! I can train it like this one. Aw, oh, he ran from our resident Pokemon master. <laughs> Boo. Whatever. By the way, at some point I am going to go ahead and... Uh, uh, get a, get a, a Master Ninja and name him Punk Fury. So that's part of the plan here. We're gonna have some fun with this one. See people in biz in beanies hitchhiking in the woods, uh, dressed in old timey clothes, basically Boulder, Colorado. <laughs> uh, fair enough, fair enough. Calm down, not that big of a problem. Plan's already begun. We gotta stop them. Everything remains the same. This is our future. We're gonna go capture a mine, and that is about the extent of our plan. Now I'm going to go trudge off and mine real hard until we win somehow. So you usually need to hit dragons at least once to have an easier time. Fair enough. Also, it's funny. He went ahead and called his dogs despite the fact that he's the one using a dog. Har har har. Team attack. He's going to doll attack. Please don't eat my little people. I think we might be able to get through this without any casualties. I say, as one of them gets eaten by a giant dog. It's okay. We only had some casualties. We only had two casualties. That's better than three. <laughs> and they lost completely. Fantastic. That's exactly what I wanted. So, you know, the soldiers are the disposable grunts anyway. We'll, we'll sort of figure it out. Right? Kind of? Okay, I want that dog gone, but I don't know how to tell them to target him, so we'll go for attack strongest. Good. 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 Again with the good. They're doing good. They're doing all right-ish. But yeah, this is why you want your little spear guys off in the back. Because they're here to get experience. They're not there to actually fight. Leave the fighting up to the characters that actually have names. Pretty sure we won this. No, we still lost. God dang, that uh, that doggo, that dog is doing some pretty good damage. It's all right. 
we'll have all three of these guys attacking force. In fact, we'll have Mr. Dragon Force over here. He's gonna go take it. Uh, what do we want to do for you guys? Mr. Bean, you're probably just good as you are. Uh, the Ziegler, however, I need you to redo your formation. Because uh, these two right here need to be swapping around. There we go. Make sure that we spread that damage around relatively the same. Uh, actually, Bean, let's uh, change your formation as well. Uh, namely, I kind of want the Dollmaster up in front. Alright, and away we go. There's something here, and we found a fancy sword in the middle of the road. Awesome. I'm sure glad how nobody bothers to pick up their trash around here. Uh, Altar of Resurrection, that's basically going to be free money. Alright. Now what's next is I'm expecting this witch to kind of function as reinforcements. So you go ahead and deal with her. Also, not gonna lie, I'm kind of hoping to run to some beast units up there with uh, Mr. Uh, Sphinx. The Obsidian Sphinx. Yeah, wow, this dog actually bites harder than this fully grown dragon. Hmm. I guess he. No, he's a worm, isn't he? Technically counts as a worm. Because he's got the two legs and the wingling type lilies. And he also doesn't have any breath attacks. Come on, Mr. Mini Stabbies. Man, they're just all about ruining that left flank. Oof. And they still lost. Jeez. Jeez, jeez, jeez. We're gonna have a hard time replacing all these dudes. We lost. So, congratulations on going out on your evaluation. I would like to thank you very much for uh, managing to lose four guys in like five minutes fighting a dog. Good job. dog got killed by a doll, because, you know, that's just kind of how that goes. I finally made a progress! Alright, smack him with a doll, smack him with an arrow. They stop killing off all my little grunts. I need them for things. I want them to get promoter missions. Oh, he's a wyvern, technically. <laughs> Worm, the o right does exist of Ogre Battle. <laughs> ah, so, it's funny. I always forget they exist up until I'm playing March of the Black Queen. And then suddenly Gilbert comes in with two of them. And then it's like, okay, uh, so those things are pretty alright for now. <laughs> like, I don't really know what I was expecting. They, they technically exist. And then they upgrade into the kind of grayish ones. Alright, the Kingdom of Platinus is divided into four regions. We got stuff everywhere, and that place is farmland, and these people love nature. And that... This is all porn crap, and the monsters are just making things worse. Can you do something about all the monsters? Yes, we'll recruit them. Thank you. That sounds great. And they're cute when they upgrade to Wyverns, too. True. They stay about the same. Okay, uh... Alright, Mr. Ziegler. Uh, whenever you're done writing your self-help book, if you could go ahead and attack this wizard, I would be very much obliged. And Mr. Anderson, I need you to attack that one as well. A uh, little, uh, little priesty check over there is about to take that town too. Now, a quick question, um, as far as the morale mechanic goes. Uh, I was a little bit unclear last time as to whether it follows March of Black Queen. Oh, hello. What just happened? There was a thing that just happened. I got a, I got a little thingy that said, hey, pay attention. Oh, she electrocuted three people. Uh, where is it? Where's my thingy that says stuff? Um... Hang on. I'm pulling it up, I think. Where is it? Where is it? Where's my list of occasions? Oh, hello there, Mr. Funpost. Thank you for the follow. Greatly appreciate it. But yeah, so as far as uh, what I was saying, as far as the morale mechanics, um, I wasn't quite sure if it was following Merchant Black Queen rules in that in that one, if you had a higher alignment, uh, it was typically a better thing. Like, if you tried to go in with a lower alignment, even if it was slightly lower than what they wanted, it would be worse than if you showed up with, you know, significantly higher than what they wanted. Um, so I'm just kind of curious if it runs more or less the same way. Alright. Bordeaux has been limited, has been liberated. Liberator. 
And Timo's visiting Alba right now. There's plenty of royal haters here. I hope he's safe. Guess what? He's not. Totally not safe whatsoever. Though I sure would appreciate getting some Dargans. Hmm. Alright, so they're all doing their thing. Okay. What the? Come on, tell me what's... What? <laughs> okay. That's, uh... He's very confused for some reason. Alright, what's your status? What does your status report? Okay, Mr. Bean is in kind of iffy shape, but about as good shape as he can be. Alright, tell you what. You move and you go ahead and watch the woods. Uh, Dio, I'm gonna need you to watch the roads here, specifically the crossroads. I'm not expecting an attack from the back here. Uh, at least I don't think they have anyone down here, so you're gonna go move up and guard this direction. Uh, Axe Boy, how are you doing? Uh, I believe you're a little bit busted up, no? Okay, Axe Boy need, needs a bit of a nap. Then Mr. Anderson, you're probably to kind of... I mean, I guess we can make that work. You know what, Anderson needs a bit of a rest anyway, so we'll just, we'll just retreat him back to town. Alright, there we go. So we'll just hold off for a minute, let everybody get into position here. So you need to be within 15 maybe, maybe 25, I think 15 is the city's moral. As in, your leader's alignment needs to be pretty close to the cities. Like, I'm assuming, and please let me know if I'm wrong with this, I'm assuming, like, up to, let's say, 35 is chaotic. Like, let's say, 36 to, like, almost 70-ish. Probably going to be neutral, and then anything above that is lawful. Like, is that about right? Is that pretty fair to assume? Also, uh, does the population actually have any gameplay effects? Uh, that's also something I was a little bit unclear on. Like, I don't think it does. Didn't seem like it did. See, 50 is neutral. 25 is chaotic, 75 is lawful. Okay, so is it just those hard numbers? Like, do they have anything that's... No, yeah, like 71... Getting pretty okay here on the old Liberty front. Population has no impact? Okay, good to know. Good to know. Mr. Nightboy is about to go take on Dio again. Actually, his uh, team right now is pretty solid. Like, uh, we have the two guys that can actually recover, taking all the hits for them. Uh, the guys that can't recover, they're just sitting in the middle getting experience on. It's good. It's good. I think uh, Dio's actually going to make a pretty okay commander here. Alright, that, that, come on, getting the arrows. Perfect. Perfect! Made some progress here. Made some progress. Alright, your character's little CNL scale is actually a number you can't see. That, that I did see, because uh, when you go to the, um, uh, when you go to the class screen, you can see exactly where it is. So if it's all the way to the left, the character's chaotic, that's in the 0 to 15 range probably. If it's leaning heavily but not all the way, maybe 15 to 35, so you can guess the number based on the skin. Okay. Gotcha. I'm, I'm just going to vaguely assume based off, like, neutral, chaotic, lawful, all that kind of thing. Hopefully uh, you get it relatively correct. Like, I'm assuming it isn't... Okay, I think we got all the parts we need to make an engine now. Um, I'm assuming it probably isn't going to be as hard of a leaning scale as March of the Black Queen, though. Because, uh, like, again, I, I'm finding it kind of funny that I literally just did a playthrough of this, and I'm still a little bit un unsure about all these things, but... Uh, to my understanding, like, it isn't as hard leaning of a scale, where in that one, if you were, like, off the mark a little bit, you basically would be <laughs> doing as poorly as if you had just gone and set the town on fire when you went and sent that person there. So... I'm assuming it's something like that. So he needs to rest. He needs to take a nap. He has been too awesome for too long. Namely, he hasn't gotten in a single fight. I've just had him hiking forever. Alright, so you're there. Tell you what. Uh, why don't you look through the woods real quick? I just want to see if there's anything going on in there. Alright. 
X-Boy, you actually can take on this fight, right? Like, I'm not being an idiot? Yeah, no, he's good. I feel good. Because I took a nap in the middle of the highway. Exactly how that song goes. Exactly how it goes. A little bit surprised that there isn't an axe bonus against uh, Griffins. Like you'd think they would do a little bit of a thing. Although I guess this did come out before Harry Potter, so... I somehow have a feeling if this came out after Harry Potter did, we would end up seeing something like that. Where just Griffins are terrifyingly... or terribly afraid of axes. The joke is the third book where there's a bunch of stuff that you'd really think would be incredibly useful later on down the line, but then they just kind of completely forget about them. Anyway. Ziegler's about 30 to 40. Okie dokie. Orky dorky! And yeah, I was probably going to go ahead and build, uh, build a few teams based off of alignment. Like, I figured down the line, since everybody's averaging out anyway, we can probably get a pretty good feel of how their alignment's going to line up simply based off of just... Like the whole percentage base scale off whatever uh, whatever classes we're using. So like if I wanted to make a let's say 60 alignment type unit, I'd probably have like three whole units, two evil ones kind of thing. Now, what is the population of this place or the morale of this place? Uh, yeah, 38. So he's pretty darn close if he's about 30 to 40. It's like man, you cannon just is over here checking out all my muscles. Great, I like it. Uh, Dio. I know you're feeling good, but I'm gonna need you to intercept this guy before he gets himself patched up. So you go this way. Uh, Cleric Sauce, you are about to pass out. You go ahead and pass out over here in front of them, please. You ask what you're supposed to do, and that answer is simple. You're supposed to go just shoot at some stuff with lightning. It's what you do. It's your best job. It's your best trait. It's those lightning hands. And today, I have coffee that tastes neither amazing nor garbage. Uh, like yesterday's coffee. Uh, by the way, the fat-free, sugar-free creamer never, just, just never, ne never again. Like, I... <laughs> it's funny, because my wife likes the stuff. And it was in there, and I thought, you know, I've tried it once, it didn't completely destroy my day the last time I tried it. Let's try it again, you know, maybe I'm, you know, maybe it's really good or something, and I just missed it, you know, maybe there's something something to this. Um, nah. Like, I had that disgusting aftertaste in my mouth for, I kid you not, like four straight hours. It was gross. And then, yeah, like, we get home. And, and so she's there, she's like, hey, guess what? I know you've been complaining about that aftertaste. Check it out. I made us a brownie. It's like some weird diet brownie thing. We're going to go go ahead and split this thing. And I'm like, yes. I need, needed to taste something other than, than friggin' sucralos in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, it was the best brownie ever, despite the fact that it really wasn't worth the uh, diet points. But whatever. Oh, man. These guys are confused as hell, and I think it's time for Mr. Obsidian Sphinx to... Uh, kind of show off to his troops a little bit. Uh, also, Ziegler, I'm going to have you move forward. Do a little bit of, little bit of stuff, yeah. So yeah, we're, we're going to have these guys branch out, so... Uh, Anderson, you're going to go this way. Ziegler, you're going to take more a more direct approach. And then the priest here is going to go ahead and take a little bit of a nap. And, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, have Mr. Commander Sphinx up there unlock everything. You're going to go over here and defend the city. And everybody should be pretty all right. And, yeah, between fights, we're going to go ahead and use the board money to train up and everything. Ooh, they're, tr they're trying to use the cover of darkness to go cover the mountains here. I don't think so. The mountains make you slow. The mountains make you vulnerable. The mountains make you ready to get stabbed by Dio a whole bunch. See, so what are you here for? I mean, you could attack them. That's definitely one of your options. Said you move down this way. Said you break camp, and you're gonna go 
I'm going to want you on the assault team against this guy. I still want to call uh, Mr. Obsidian Sphinx Steve, by the way, for obvious reasons. These guys, despite kind of avoiding the rest of the fight, uh, they're going to form the assault. Oi. That was a bit of a weird hiccup that happened just there. It's uh, taken us three days to fight these guys. Now, I'm safe. If I'm if I'm trying to go for the good guy route, but still killing off uh, Freddy, like, am I safe to go ahead and say, like, go eliminate every team I run across? Is that something that I can kind of get away with? Because last time it didn't seem like there were any punishments for, like, actually winning fights, like actually eliminating everybody. And yes, I realize that historically speaking, winning a fight typically did not involve actually beating everybody. In fact, the overall average of losses per, uh, per battles was about 5 to 10 percent. Most of the time, one side would see that they're losing, and they would go ahead and retreat, and then because they were retreating, the other side typically expected a trap or something, so they wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't pursue in most cases. See, killing enemy teams affects nothing. Okay, excellent. So it just gives me good stuff. Just get rewards for that. There's something here! It's ninja stuff. It's almost like they wanted us to be able to get these guys right off the bat or something. Oh my god. Alright, I'd like Mr. Anderson to eliminate this barbarian unit, though. Because I want some strong casters in my crew. And I'm gonna train them to be real good. See, the way characters talk makes it seem like it matters, but it doesn't. My 100 chaos frame runs and 0 chaos frame, frame runs both involve murdering everyone. Whale casualties of war and all that, and also maybe I shouldn't send this team in, because oh my god, doggos. Freaking doggos, man. Why are these doggos so strong? They're big, strong, angry beasts. Like, I feel like the Hellhound in this one is what they wanted the giant to be in March of the Black Queen. Because playing through that recently, it's interesting that it's like an, it's a unit that technically has a whole lot of attack power behind it. It attacks three times, and then it's kind of super hot garbage as soon as you start using it. Because, um, yeah, they can never hit anything, because their agility is, like, sub-trash to a hilarious degree. Uh, so, yeah, they just, like, they never do a thing. Should wait a minute. Dio. Dio, Dio, Dio. Uh, go ahead and attack this guy, please. Okay. Go that way, and then everybody else is going to pile on city. You know what? I don't think we're going to end up winning this, so if we can't win that race, we'll just have our buddy charge on in. And I'd like Taki here to have at least one fight. So everybody pile! You know, now that I think about it, it's a little bit funny. Because uh, when you're doing Night of Lotus runs and things like that, it's the same thing where they're like, man, we can't possibly fight everyone, and then, like, most runs involve eliminating every single unit to get all their loot. Like, especially the fact that they hide stuff like the Sherwood set away in all kinds of really weird places. Like, let's see, you got uh, the Solia Beach Dragon fight for one of them. You've got the second Labina fight which you specifically have to go kill off one of the random gremlins, like, way off in the back. You gotta get one of them as a random drop from uh, quest mode. And then another one is... let's see. The hat's from Celia, the bow is from that one uh, gremlin. Actually, I believe the alternate version of that fight you might be able to get it somewhere else. Um, you have... Uh, what was the other one? You get the clothes... I don't think, I think the, uh, the clothes are in Celia as well. I think it's the boots that are somewhere else. But, uh, yeah, I'm surprised that that set never made a comeback in any of the other versions. In fact, I never thought about it, but there's a major OB64 reference in the PSP remake of uh, Let Us Play Together. Like, it never occurred to me that um, uh, the friggin' uh, Dragoon set bonus. It, it, it's absolutely a reference to this game. So, if you have any of the dragon pieces, namely you've got the, the Sword of Tiamat, the, the Helmet, and the Armor, or you can use the, uh, the Shield in place of the Sword, and actually do the same thing for the Ogre set as well, um, where they give you a shield instead of a two-handed sword. Um, but yeah, you get a uh, the Dragon Slayer bonus, and you can just put that skill on anyone. Let's see, what are you planning? Things. You know, except yeah, the, the sword is 
preposterously difficult to get a hold of, so you kind of sort of want to do it in other ways. So typically if you give somebody like a shield and a knife, they're crazy strong <laughs> using Dragon Slayer. Uh, Our true goal is revolution! Destroy no permanent old nobles or change the kingdom. Yeah, that it, that's about how that goes. Or to get your attention. Because, yeah, we didn't expect them to dispatch all the rookies, but I guess we're the only ones available. Because the rest of the army here is incompetent. Where are you going? I gotta take my leader, your leadership position away. This is all your fault somehow. <laughs> that, that like that sassy little pose that he does is hilarious. He just throws his hands on like, ugh! Man, how dare you ask me? How dare you? It's like, are you out of your mind? Uh, we have no information whatsoever. Um, I'm sure there's at least some. I mean, we might as well at least try. Like, he's making fair points here. Although, yeah, Dio is always wrong, so that can never be, uh, never be overstated. It's like, hey, people, I'm here to talk to you. I, I think I know how to solve this problem. Uh, you see, we're gonna build a bridge over the enemy army, and that's the way we do it. I'm just gonna build a big old bridge, and we're gonna throw rocks at them. It's the best way to win. Bridges are life. Bridges are everything. Hmm. You know what? Maybe that's another idea. Maybe there just needs to be a t-shirt, right? It's just like, a, just a giant stone bridge with uh, Hugo's face on it. Just make Platinus great again. <laughs> he just wants to build a giant bridge across the border. <laughs> ah, man, I'm getting way too much enjoyment out of that. Okay, okay, so. Peoples here. Uh, are there any ones that we can promote? First of all... Can anyone plus change? You probably can't. I'm assuming you can't. Nope. Uh, what about you guys? What do we actually need for knights? Okay, we haven't unlocked knights. Uh, those guys, yeah, we're gonna be lacking in stats for basically everything. Um, oh well. Dyson? Huh. Might say he's sucky, but he's more of a vacuum. That, I'm sorry, that joke's stupid. Alright, but equipping items, though. I don't think we've gotten any uniques yet. I think we've already equipped all our starting gear, so we should be all right. Uh, who performed poorly, though? Uh, you guys. Uh, you guys are going to need a complete change in formation. Namely, let's, uh, let's move some stuff around here. So, first off, uh, soldier grunts. You go in the back, because we don't have a whole lot of uh, stuff going on yet. Okay, I, I thought I could combine them, actually. Uh, Mr. Pull Strings, you're going up here. And then we're going to leave one guy in there for attack's sake. Um, Alright, we need some replacement soldiers, so get everybody their replacements. And alright, I think we're good. Da, 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 da. Can we train yet? No, we don't have training yet. Uh, we can do area investigation. Uh, so, you know what? Yeah, you know what? Let's do a, a quick little scouting thing to see if we can get another pet dragon. Because if I can get another one, uh, what I'd like to do is uh, is use another dragon to plug in that one gap where those soldiers kept dying. So that's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna do here. So I'm gonna give everybody one little run around the map, you know, kind of see what they can find and all that. I'm uh, gonna send these characters out to all these different towns to see what they can, what kind of information they can give us. Maybe we can get some items because I don't remember what exactly does what. Uh, so we'll do that. Get all of our information and possible resources. And uh, again, ooh, see a shirt with a smaller smiling Hugo that just says build bridges, uh, not walls. He's holding a bottle of termites. <laughs> yes. Actually, I think it says, in the PS1 version, I think it says they, that uh, they come in a box, technically. So, ha, huh, that's a detail nobody possibly cares about. Anyway, <laughs> dude, that would be amazing. Also, luckily, uh, in terms of that whole just utterly brain-dead debacle. I guess everything's getting reopened soon, which I'm pretty excited about, because I have a very long-term technicality that I might potentially be able to fix uh, due to that being reopened. Um, so that'd be nice. I'll, I mean, like, it comes with all the strings attached. We're going to have some real stupid stuff in a few weeks. As in, apparently, like, dude guys planning to friggin' declare a national emergency over a thing that, like, Basically, everyone forever has said has no possible way of working. 
Who boy. But anyway, hopefully, uh, you know what? In the meantime, hopefully some stuff gets back on track, because that was a lot of people not getting paid for a while. So your leader's name is Frederick Reskin, who's a merchant in the West. Oh, man, there's another reason not to trust Freddy. The guy's coming in with his Wall Street background. God. <laughs> Let's see, for immature dragons, if they're 25 to 75, they evolve into their elemental type. The 0 to 24 uh, go black, 76 go platinum. Well, I mean, I thought they had to sell a hell of a lot more than that to go platinum, but if you say so. Actually, getting, uh, man, getting yourself a, uh, a platinum or evil dragon in Night of Lotus is... Oof, it, it's not a good time. You you basically have to go and get like get all of their uh, it, so the alignment in that game works a bit different, right? You basically have to have them evolve under very certain conditions. And I'm trying to trying to remember like I think it was you need you need to have them as for example like lawful, and then they had to be how to go. I forget if you had to use an elemental mirror from an angel to turn them into divine or. There was some other way to do it, because I think it was, like, after they got their stats up to a certain level, uh, they would be, like, and, and if you had managed to avoid them getting uh, promoted into their respective dragon part. No, I'm being an idiot. It's because you, okay, you could get them as a promotion from the elemental dragons. That's what it was. But if they were unlawful and you got them up to some certain amount of stats and then, uh, I think it was... I think it was like some certain other map conditions that had to be met. Then they could uh, transform into that, and then the evil ones, you, I don't believe you could actually uh, get without cheating. Uh, uh oh. We're getting some weird lag here. Let's see. Um, so, with the success of FEH and launch of Blankers Mobile, do you think Square will push an OBTO mobile game? I hope so. I really, really hope so. Um, they actually were working on one. Like, I don't know if you heard about this. Uh, they were kind of sort of making one a while ago. Um, actually, uh, Vale was uh, was telling me about it. Uh, that's the thing. I'd heard about it a while ago. Like, I saw it on a post. Forgot about it. Vale was mentioning it. Found, um, and then, like, researched its uh, history a little bit. And basically... I can't remember the name right now. I think it was, like, Lost Legion or Lost... No, Lost Order. That's what it was. Um, so yeah, Lost Order, and you could tell there were a bunch of elements, like for example from TOPSP and stuff like that. Like there, it had stuff in there. Uh, thing is, it kind of had a beta two years ago, and then seemed to disappear off the face of the earth. However, however, um, they they said in some press interviews, like there were some leaks from press interviews and things like that. Not press interviews, uh, board meetings. Uh, there were some leaked board meetings that basically said, okay, yeah, we are working on it. Like, it's still happening. We're just ironing out a bunch of weird stuff from that beta. And I looked at, like, I, again, there's some gameplay out there. If you just, like, look up Lost Order gameplay. Um, oh, I've never seen this game before. What's it about? Uh, essentially, it is a kind of hybrid real-time strategy and, um, well, and uh, turn-based strategy kind of thing. Wherein you're kind of moving your units around the map. And, you know, they, they get into fights. They, you have some vague orders over their... Uh, over their fights, but the main crux of the game is the fact that every single thing you do is kind of sort of judged. So like, uh, for example, each of your units has a particular alignment that they follow, as you can see right here, uh, right to the left of their name, so this guy's neutral. Um, they've all got different alignments, they've all got different stuff going on with them. So each town, for example, has its its morale, aka just, you know, how much uh, chaos or law they, they like in that town. And based on how you handle your uh, liberations of towns, based on uh, choices you make during the story, uh, based on how you handle yourself in fights and all that kind of thing, that will affect all, like, all kinds of different story stuff, and it's just the game kind of adapts as you go along. So, for example, if you played something like New Vegas, that's probably the closest thing that I could describe in terms of, like, you know, just, just a game that will adapt to every choice being made. So that, that's basically what this game does. So... It's it's a very in unique series. Like it probably uh, March the Black Queen plays a bit more like a board game. This plays a bit more. Uh, I would say I, I would say this one's a bit more kind of immersive and that kind of thing. But uh, but yeah. Uh, so so the whole idea is just you have multiple wars and all that kind of thing going on at once, and you're more or less trying to find an outcome out of it. Like it again. Fallout is kind of a good example, like at least Classic Fallout is a good example. Uh, 
Uh, let's see, feel a special power emanating from you. Must be the elemental Pendra. Um, you can share what you know if you go ahead and join us, because we could we could use a witch. Uh, but yeah, just basically there's a bunch of just everything's got variants. Everything's always adjusting. It's a very cool series. So uh, if you've never tried it before, we'd definitely recommend it. Anyway, we got a pet dragon. Um, ooh, we got a second pet dragon. See, neat. It looks like FFF ta Tactics but somewhat deeper. Funny part is, this series is the reason that FF Tactics exists. So, originally it was Ogre Battle, um, which is... So, March of the Black Queen, which was the one that came before this. A very similar layout, very similar type stuff. However, uh, can I get my interrupt, please? Uh, apparently I missed my timing on my interrupt. But we technically won against a baby! Nice. So we didn't get the recruit, but oh well. Uh, but anyway, so... Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, get off to the world map here. Uh, so yeah, uh, basically you had Mercy the Black Queen, which was this same thing except back on the SNES. There was actually a vastly improved version on the PS1 uh, called, uh, was it the... It's not limited edition. Or was it limited? No, it was limited edition. And uh, yeah, they weren't quite confident that people would like this kind of hybrid type of strategy game. So what they did, uh, they went ahead and said, okay, look, we're going to make another one. Um, we're going to call it Tactics Ogre, and, uh, you know, it's basically going to be tile-based, it's going to be doing this whole thing. Like, basically, think of FFT, except you are way more open with your equipment, like, anybody can use literally almost anything. But, uh, but yeah, they, they don't technically have skills, but they can use whatever equipment or spells that they want. Um, well, there are some limitations on spells based on your classes, but whatever else. So, uh, so yeah. Both Ogre Battle and Tactics Ogre dove very deep into all kinds of different mechanics. Like, they had a ton of mechanics going around in the background all the time. Now, unfortunately... Oh, well, actually, first of all, fortunately, uh, uh, this uh, Tactics Ogre let us play together. That was this, this one that inspired FFT. Um, basically, it was... I should mention it's the same people that made it when I say inspired. Um... It was, like, it was really good. Like, the story was astoundingly good. There was a, a ton of ways that it could go, just like all the rest of the games. And so they, um, so yeah, they, they looked at it. And they're like, look, we want you to make this, but, we, you know, we want you to kind of tone it down and make it a little bit different. So he got pulled off to go work, or Matsuno, the, the head designer guy at the time, uh, got pulled off to go do that project for Square. Or, what was Square at the time. And so, yeah, that's how FFT got made. Uh, so if you liked FFT, you want something deeper, look, definitely look at uh, just this entire series. I actually have an entire article. Uh, if you look over at... I'm, I'm, here, I'll just blatantly plug this here. Uh, but yeah, nichegames.com. Uh, there we go. I actually have an entire list with all the games, where to find them, what they brought in. There's, there's so much to the series. There's so much to love here. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, so yeah, 10 out of 10, we definitely recommend. <laughs> it's, it, it's really, it's really neat, the kinds of stuff they did. Uh, there's also a bunch of overhaul mods out there that, uh, especially there's several big ones that are being worked on. There's a lot to love here. Um, alright, so how do we want to do this map? I'm gonna go ahead and move you down this way, because, see, yeah, I, I know those clerics are coming from over there. Uh... Probably taking the main team here. It seems like Ziegler's our big, uh, big push boy here. So I'm gonna have Ziegler and Anderson uh, push forward. And we've got a good amount of uh, different damage types going on. So we'll push them up this way. Uh, I'm gonna want to defend that neutral town, so I'm gonna send, let's say Bean. Uh, so Bean's team, you're gonna go defend this area right here. Just make sure that nobody passes by you. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Taki and Dio. Uh, you're just going to get ready to take this town. You're not necessarily going to take it just yet, because for reasons, but I'm just going to need you to go ahead and watch it for the time being. And, um, yeah, the, actually, no, she's just going to go ahead and watch the town. Yeah, Dio is going to be the one uh, uh, defending for now, just in case. Um, so, alright, let's go ahead and break then. Yeah, Potato is our resident challenge runner of games, with uh, Kitten being the challenge presenter. Dang straight! That's how that goes! But uh, yeah, I love uh, I love doing challenge runs. Like I have done some pretty ridiculous runs of this series so far, including be beating the entire thing with fairies, almost beating the entire thing deathless with fairies too. It was the second to last fight of OB64. 
that they got taken out by a random Sphinx. Ah, it's so close. It's so dang close. Ooh, some stuff happened. And yeah, mi yeah, Mr. Cow is our resident armor core expert who uh, who makes cow puns. It's pretty fantastic. So thank you for the follow there, Mr. Van Vermel. Greatly appreciate it. And we go ahead and do this thing. Ah, so pew pew on her, pew pew on her. Man, these uh, these archers, or, or rather the Amazons, they always remind me of uh, Zidane from uh, FF9. <laughs> so yeah, good uh, you know, good to always see more folks get folks getting into this whole thing. Because yeah, it's it's a series that is pretty severely underloved. I gotta say, like especially. Especially the fact that it basically created a lot of the genre, you know? Like, most of the elements of the rest of the games you'll see are just like, this is kind of where they originated. And the funny part is, FFT, at, at, at least according to design documents and interviews and everything else, the, the implication given is that it was supposed to be Episode 8 of this series. Um, but when I say Episode 8, I don't necessarily mean that there were seven games in total. It's a weird situation where they just release them completely out of order. Like, they started with five, then suddenly they just had what is either four or... Or no, they went from five, then they went to seven. Then decided to go back to what is theoretically either four or one. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah. Actually, I think it was uh, I think it was episode four for Night of Lotus. Now that I think about it, because that... Man, it's been a while since I watched that intro, actually. Uh, and then they had, um, yeah, they had a remake of the, of the SNES one, so that's episode 7. That's the one that if you've ever wanted, like, proper Game of Thrones levels of plot in your game, it's that one. Like, with full, like, betrayals and everything, changing your factions and everything, actually, like, just the entire story just based off who lives or dies, it's, dude, it's so good. It's so good. Um, and yeah, the, the writing, I would argue, is way better. Actually, you end up seeing a lot of the same characters. Um, in fact, uh, one of the, um, what's it, uh, one of the articles I have put up there just kind of goes over some of the, some of the little thingies, like, as far as the different, uh, different, uh, stuff you see between games, you can clearly tell in FFT, like, which characters were supposed to be who. Um, like, it, for example, uh, Orlando is in many ways a combination of, um, of Ozma and, um, and Hobberim from, uh, uh, what's it, uh, from, uh, uh, Let Us Coming Together. Wait, tap the rock? What rock? What rock are you supposed to tap? Oh, 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 there we go. He's asking for a fist bump, Mr. Cow. It's okay, I, I didn't get it either at first. Because I don't brain so good. <laughs> I never brain so good. I just drink a bunch of coffee and then talk real fast, and then do a bunch of challenges that should technically have zero chances of winning. I mean, so far we haven't lost any characters, so that's alright. At least we're, uh, we're on part two now. Or fight two. I'm gonna go do some liberating. And I know for a fact where I need to go. I definitely need to go take that town right over here in order to actually liberate Manguy, but I want to get my Chaos Brain up. So what I want to do, like I said, with this run, I want to make sure to kill off Freddy. And I want to make sure to... Um, uh, to yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and say that... Uh, but yeah, we're, we're gonna try to, to kill off Freddy, but we're still gonna try to get 100 Chaos Frame. Like, we're still gonna try to do the best thing to be the best people possible. And we'll see how that works out. Ah. Let's see, if you wanna try the series, the games in the story order are Night Lotus, March of Black Queen, Let's Go Together, and Holt. Oh yeah, and you said it, Coffee, I need some more? Hell yes. You don't need to play them in order, honestly, but in case you want to. Yeah, each of them are definitely their own self-contained story. Um, they, each of them also has a ton of different endings. I mean, hell, March of the Black Queen, it surprised me. Like, I figured, you know, old SNES game, not, you know, they probably didn't, they literally did not expect a lot of people to play it. Dude, the story can change wildly based off, uh, based off so many different factors. Um, like, hell, in one case, one of the characters that's like an outright good guy, he's literally named a saint later. This isn't even a spoiler, because you have no idea who the hell I'm talking about. Dude's literally named the saint later uh, in, in some, of the, some of the versions. And he friggin' like, he has you murdered. He's <laughs> like, yeah, I need this guy out of the way. <laughs> friggin' murder time. I was like, man, that did not see that coming. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's crazy, it's crazy. But yeah, it's a great series. Um, 
there's like there's only one part in the entire series where I actually looked at the plot and thought, yeah, we uh, we got a little bit lazy with the writing here, and it's only one character with one decision in one of the games. All the rest of it, that you could tell that they did their best to flesh it out as much as possible. You can tell that they got as much in there before some some guy in the background was like, "Look, seriously, you've been working on this forever. Please just ship the dang game now." <laughs> we've been doing this for way too long. Uh, like it, it's funny because yeah, every time you read about um, that, like stories of development for any of these, it's like just Mitsuno sitting there like, just like, "I need more stuff. I need more stuff. I need more stuff." Like, dude, chill just chill and let the thing happen already and i mean this later happened with other teams as well i should point out like the same thing happened with um like knight of lotus and ob64 they weren't technically headed by him but they're still amazing so it was, it's like one of those cases where yeah you can tell that they maybe had a little bit better overall directive control of their products but um but yeah definitely one of those cases where it's just really funny to read about because, uh, yeah, my, my current view of that guy is just he's sitting there just, like, snorting cocaine, farting out ideas, and then passing out while his programs are just panically trying to cram them all in there. Uh, let's see. Mercy Black Queen feels like a like core of the series, but it's both old and hard to follow. Fine without emulating. Yeah, so, actually, three days from now, it will be impossible to get it uh, legitimately anymore. Um, unless you buy an old SNES copy. So if you have a Wii laying around, uh, you can get both... I believe you can get both March of the Black Queen and um, uh, and uh, OB64 off of a Wii from the from the virtual store. Here's the problem, though. Um, in three days, that shuts down. So on January 29th. Uh, again, I, I covered that in that article. I'm hoping there were, like, a, I think it was, like, by this point, I think it's, like, 1,500 people who looked at it. I'm hoping those people all went and got a Wii. Anyway, so so yeah, that's that way to get that. Um, March of Black Queen will be completely unavailable to get um, as of the 29th, because while the Wii U store will still have OV64 available, unless you downloaded March of the Black Queen onto a Wii and transferred it to a Wii U, yes, the system is as stupid as it sounds. Um, it will be impossible to get without just going and buying the cartridge. Unfortunately, the PS1 version never made it to PSN for some reason. Uh, that version... Like, honestly, if I were to recommend a version to first experience the game, it would probably be the original SNES one, but then if I were to recommend a version that I just think is overall better, it, it would be the PS1 version, because the music's better, the animations are better, the, the art quality is better. The only downside, and one of the, it's one of these weird downsides where you usually will only end up forgiving this after you've already, like, invested into the game kind of thing, for some reason, when you hit the pause button, the music turns off, and then it restarts as soon as you want to pause. It's meant to be, it, like, it's clearly a feature that's there for people that are on their repeat playthrough. It's, it's definitely not a first playthrough kind of thing, because as a first impression, it, it feels weird. It definitely feels weird, because, like, my first impression was that version, and then I went back and tried the SNES one and liked it more. So, I would recommend, like, the SNES one, if you really like it, then the PS1 version. Uh, which also comes with some better AI, some rebalances, and all that kind of thing. And, uh, yeah. So, so yeah. Really solid series. Like, my personal first one uh, in the series was Knight of Lotus. It's another one that's it comes with a little caveat to it. Uh, because, uh, yeah, Knight of Lotus is a fantastic game, but, but a little slow. There's no legit way to get it without uh, going and getting an original cartridge. And nobody's shelling out $300 for that, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was looking through the Amazon links when I was putting the uh, the thing together. And hello there, Mr. Uh, Defil Driver. Wow, that is hard to say, actually. Nice to meet ya. But yeah, um, so like Night of Lotus, my, like when I first, uh, first got it... Actually, wait, I was going on about Amazon links. First of all, I was going through the Amazon links, and yeah, the cheapest on there was 300 bucks. It's kind of nuts, but... Uh, if, you, if you get a Japanese recreation copy, I think they're like 20 bucks, but... You know, got to read Japanese, which, let's be honest, I'm pretty sure most uh, most everyone in this group here will probably not be speaking Japanese. All right, Dio, you have successfully climbed the mountain. Congratulations! Now go ahead and climb back off that mountain. I was hoping you'd encounter a dragon or something up there. Ooh, but I found a buckler. Nice, I can make a balcony. I think. See, Dagar would be easier on the tongue. Oh, well, hello there, Mr. Dagar. I see that you have joined this thingy here. Uh, which, by the way, yeah, uh, 
Uh, X Division is, like, that is sticking to weekly now. That is going to be a regular thing. Just so you know. The Watashiwa Momo... I... Let's see. Something about a Wakazashi, so something about a knife. Uh, Wa, so there's a baby in the background. Uh, Momo... Desu. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's a baby riding a cow, wielding a knife, and he's got a desire for his bottle. That makes perfect sense, I understand. It, I think it means I am a peach. Uh, if you say so. Definitely think a uh, knife-wielding baby wanting his milk, riding a cow, makes more sense. But alright, whatever works. Actually, speaking of, uh, what's the monitor say? Monitor says kids are still sleeping. Thank you, Saturday, for allowing the kids to sleep in. I greatly appreciate it. And by the way, guys, um, as soon as the kids are up, I'm going to have to go and, uh, you know, be dad mode for a little while, get a little bit of work done. But, um, yes, we got a promotion. Hell yeah, we got a promotion. Um, so yeah, we, we, got, we got a new man. Um, but all right. And then after that, later today, later today, uh, we will be continuing on with this. So, just so you know. All right, Ziegler, thank you so much for your promotion there. You're gonna go ahead and you're gonna you're gonna go watch this bridge. This frees Mr. Dollmaster up to do some stuff. Uh, unfortunately, I just noticed I kind of worked myself into a corner here, because if they don't finish off this cleric somehow, uh, she is gonna go take our base. And uh, this time, since we have a full complement of units, and hopefully won't be running into any nonsense, um, I am going to have to actually count the fact uh, that uh, bases can be lost. But alright, alright. What is this? It's a rosary! Perfect for a master of healing like yourself. Yeah, I have no idea why I somehow correlate Ogre Battle and Resident Evil. To, I don't know. I don't know. It just My brain just goes there. Uh, who do we want to send to liberate this town? Tell me, Dissy. We've got 48. I think Taki's probably good to take it then. Gimme. Give Gimme give this town. So yeah, we're gonna go down, we're gonna go take all of this. And yeah, we'll, we'll go on from there. Now let's go see what they're doing. Yeah, Resident Ogre. Funnily enough, uh, one of the um, uh, one of the old roleplay runs that I actually did for T.O. Lutt uh, was actually just to try to remake the entirety of, uh, of just as many of the Resident Evil characters as I could remember. And I'm really tempted, I was actually really tempted to uh, redo that for, uh, for the release of Resident Evil 2 since that just came out. Because I was thinking, man, this is something that, could, that people might actually look at. But specifically with the One Vision mod, uh, because, uh, yeah, with one vision, you can... Wait a minute, this is my guy, right? Yeah, it is. Uh, with a one vision mod, you can actually remake all of them almost accurately. Like, uh, in the, um, if you look in the one vision guide... Yeah, RE2 got a remake! Like, it's really good, too! I, I was watching some, uh, some videos of it, it's amazing! Like, holy crap, they put some love into that thing! Like, I was legitimately blown away looking at that thing. I, like, I should point out... Not only did they make a friggin' amazing remake, right? Not only did they carry over all the extra modes, they also decided, hey, you know what? All of the uh, random side characters, <laughs> guess what? They get campaigns as well. And also, if that wasn't enough, they added a roguelike mode for each of them. So, uh, yeah, friggin' infinite replayability. It looks amazing. The entire thing, like, looks like it plays amazing as well. The reviews are just stellar right now. Um, they added modes for either making it new, making it uh, more accessible for newer players, or they added like keeping the original like uh, ribbon system and stuff like that. Like, dude, that remake! I, I should point out the amount of love that went into that remake. Like, you know how they remade Lux for this series? It's at that level of love that went into it. Except they actually balanced it properly. Uh, I should point out, um, Mr. Uh, uh, Venfernal. Uh, let's see. Awesome, well, the old RE2 would be kind of small, wait, would be too small kind of on its own. True, true, but you can make a, a full team with a full roster. Actually, what I was originally getting at was the fact that um, uh, when it when it comes to uh, to the One Vision mod for the PSP game, um, you can actually remake all the characters, including having Leon with a pistol and knife. So, 
So yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, anyway. Uh, what was I getting at here? So, so yeah, that remake, like, it is just so cool, so good looking, and, and yeah, what the hell was I getting at? I just had a thought in mind. Um, dang it. Dang it, thoughts leave my mind. Stupid brain not doing thinky thoughts. Why you did this. Alright, uh, I think he's in good shape. I don't, I think he's only gotten in, like, one skirmish already, so it's fine. Um, let's see, stream the demo, but the stream disappeared, yeah. I don't know what happened to that. I tried uh, I tried watching it for a little bit, and it looked really good. And then, yeah, I don't know what happened. Like, I just wasn't able to access it. But I should point out that, yeah, my... Um, that specifically, a lot of aspects of my internet are hot garbage, and specifically if I try to go over and, like, whenever I'm... I'm, I'm typically watching things later in the day, like, already going to bed. So I'm just sitting there with a PSP, or not a PSP, with a with a Vita, and then I have my phone just like held up slightly behind it, so the little bar of the screen is just above the screen. So I'm making like a ghetto DS out of a out of my phone and a Vita, but <laughs> but yeah, just, that's kind of my usual nighttime setup, and or just a phone listening to whatever happened that day, and then uh, and then playing some Bloodborne or something. But uh, yeah. Alright, finish off that griffin. Wham. There goes most of their damage. Uh, let's see, they did a sort of rem uh, remake of RE2 and Code Veronica and Darkside Chronicles. Yeah, but that's... I mean... Eh. I mean, that's a like unsure. <laughs> it's not survival horror. I mean, like, survival horror is a completely different animal. Okay, cleric vestments. So I think that, that does mean that we can make upgraded priests now. Alright, uh, what's this town looking like? Is that too far away from you? Okay, morale 55. You're probably still neutral, yeah? Oh, he's evil. Right. So, um, Anderson, you take your chaotic butt down this way. And we need, you know, let's get, uh, priesty face over here. You take this town, please. We don't want to scare off the locals. Uh, da -da 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 -da. But yeah, no, that, that remake is just so good looking. So, so, so good. Uh, I want to take that town, but not yet. Um, I mean, I guess technically speaking, we're just going to have to take the mine later. And go ahead and pile all these guys in. Oh, and, uh, yeah, I will be trying to make use of the Dark Knights this time. Because last time I didn't use a single one. I was kind of bummed out by the fact that I had to go sell all of their actual equipment in order to, <laughs> in order to even make it by with that run. So, uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're gonna use some Dark Knights this time. Let's see, uh, especially enjoyed the, uh, the third re and after that. I think the overall quality went down. Yeah, like, man. Y you know how, how, uh, Remake is in, like, the Resi 1 Remake? just basically redefined survival horror for a while, and just like, the fact that they kept the, to the vision of the original, that's how that, that RE2 remake looks. Like, the, it's obvious they kept the same engine from RE7, which was astounding in its own right, but then, but yeah, they, they basically took all the stuff to work from that one, like the, you know, like the enemies pacing around, and like they have, they literally have stuff constantly pouring in and re like refreshing the enemy pool and stuff like that. So you have entire areas that need to be blocked off. So they expanded on that mechanic. Um, they, instead of just aiming and shooting the entire time, just like, for example, blowing the legs off something is going to be way more effective than actually trying to kill anything because, uh, yeah, you're, you're, you're just kind of in a position where all your resources are super limited. They are infinite. Like, I believe they're fully infinite, uh, as far as I can tell, anyway. Like, there's new stuff pouring in from all kinds of places all the time. All your enemies are always active. Every single one of them is unique, too, which is the weird part. So, like, you can recognize an enemy stalking you throughout the entire game, as far as I can tell. Like, it's just astounding how they did it. Let's see, quality went down after 4, yeah. It, 4 is kind of the point where they're like, you know, we realize what happened... Interesting. I don't think I actually had a... Yeah, I didn't even have a knight in that team that liberated this this group here. This is just some rando that they have, uh... That they have filling in the ranks. 
because I guess they didn't uh, they didn't have a warlock sprite. Hmm. Cows get eaten quite often. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> they make tasty burgers and occasionally steak. Man, I will never forget the look on the guy's face when I went to. So I used to travel in business all the time, right? So I'm, I'm going there, you know, having a having a business meeting with uh, with my boss at the time and, and a couple clients and everything else. Everybody's going in. They're ordering their fancy like friggin' fifty to one hundred dollar steaks. And you know, I don't I don't know the proper ins and outs of steaks. I'm I'm there. I'm like sixteen at the time or whatever. Is I started working pretty darn early. So just there in my uh, my little uh, little suit and everything, my little briefcase. Like you know what? Let me uh, let me go ahead and get this filet mignon here. Like, how would you like it done? Very well done. Like, I want that thing charred. Okay. You know, like, you can just tell the angry twitch in the guy's face. Like, you're ordering a fifty dollars steak and you're asking it to get turned into charcoal. <laughs> I'm like, yes, I like burnt food. Thank you very much. I know I'm a weirdo. I know I'm probably getting cancer down the line for it, but dude, I really really like charred food. It's just it's my prerogative. All right. Ah, oh, man, that guy was pissed. Actually, when my dad found about it, he was pretty pissed, too. Because uh, the guy knows his steak. Like my, my dad's a, uh, a uh, musician. But he always, he always, always, always insists on medium rare. I don't know why I mentioned the musician part. It doesn't really matter as far as the steak goes. I guess musicians are supposed to order their steak different? I don't know. I don't know. Dude's pretty well-known overseas, but... Don't want there to be any like any relevance between that and the other thing kind of situation. Anyway, yeah, probably don't want to go ahead and order a crazy expensive steak and ask them to ruin it. Just generally speaking, they might look down on you for it. It's like in King of the Hill, pretty much. <laughs> See, I saw a guy get sorted in the story, but I have no idea why. Uh, he is one of the guys, he's basically the guy that captured them. Uh, so we liberated the place, um, and we had a, um, uh, da, da, da. uh basically the, their captor was, uh, was captured there. Uh, Raid is a guy that just wants all the rebels whatsoever to be dead. I mean, fair enough, they are rebelling after all, though he wants to do it for kind of crappy reasons, because he's kind of a douche. And wow, these guys really crit a lot, I have to say. I would like to not lose any units if I could, but I'm about to lose that new fighter I just made. So I should point out, in this game, the only way you actually get new characters is if they offer to join you in the story, or if you promote them from basic soldiers. So in order to promote a unit to a fighter or an Amazon, uh, you have to have that, like, for example, in this squad, there's three basic soldiers, right? They're getting three experience uh, per fight. Once they get up to 100, one of them is promoted into a fighter or Amazon, depending on what the leader is. Um, so, for example, the leader's a guy here, so he's going to be promoting fighters. If this uh, priest over here were to promote them, uh, they would be becoming uh, Amazons. Uh, that, there is an item called uh, the Anse Cross that if you have them carry it, it will be the other way around. But either way, that's kind of more or less how that goes. Now, what is your morale? You're at 50. Your morale is at 58. Okay, so yeah, this guy just wants to be winning fights. He does not want to be capturing anything. Let me go ahead and camp a little bit. Get a little bit of recovery. Tell me what this town thinks of us. Alright. Let's see. What if our guest uh, likes to stay <laughs> steak well done? Then we'll ask them to leave. Ah, how dare you make me hungry when the wife is out for the evening? You know how? You know how? Because food, you know, there's never a bad time for food. Like, logically speaking, yes, it does mess up your stomach to eat a bunch of fatty foods before you go to sleep. Though I will say, if you do that, you get some crazy as hell dreams. Like, if you ever decide, hey, you know what, this day's going pretty alright, I want some trippy as crap dreams, go have yourself just a big old lump of cheese before bed. You're gonna feel super weird. <laughs> and yeah, the implication uh, from across all of this story kind of makes me think that... Like Platinus in general was taken taken over by well it, it's currently in the process of getting taken over by the real world equivalent of the Holy Lotus Empire or wait real world equivalent of the Holy Roman Empire sorry but they're called the Holy Lotus Empire in this one my bad I did dumb uh, but 
But yeah, this place, I always get the impression that it's like the real-world equivalent of Russia or Bohemia, uh, wherein they've got a pretty decent-sized, you know, landmass kind of situation going on, but they do have, they have mud seasons, the area's got, you know, got a whole lot of crappy weather going on, a whole lot of farmland and mud and all that kind of thing, and also the locals tend to go be pretty down on you pretty often. Alright, light mace, that won't help us very much, and it's also not a mace, but whatever you say, game, whatever you say. Let's see, the Angry Beavers had an episode on eating before going to bed. You know, I don't think I actually saw that one. Come to think of it, whatever happened to Angry Beavers? They just kind of disappeared and never had a follow-up. I feel like just about everything else has somehow come back in a really crappy manner, but I've never seen any remakes of Angry Beavers. Ugh, maybe that was Justin Bieber. 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 Whatever. It's actually weird, because uh, his music has gotten... Not, like, it doesn't make you want to grate your ears off anymore. It's still not necessarily good, but it's not actual suffering in song form anymore, so I guess that's an improvement. Makes the radio easier to listen to. Actually, no. I, ch I take that back. You know why? Because those people that did a cover of Africa, you know, like the one that basically came in, they're like, we're going to take out all of the choruses and make the entire thing super monotonous. But it's okay, because it's Africa, and this song is so good that, you know, it's basically going to carry itself anyway. Um, yeah, those people got an album. Uh, they got an album deal for uh, a whole bunch of covers, somehow. Uh, you know what? Just, just, yeah. I'm sure I'm not the only one that heard that thing and thought, wow, um, this is really depressing, actually, because they kind of... Like, they literally just took a song that had a whole lot of ups and downs and everything else, and then they just, like, auto-tuned it and made it super monotonous. Um, but anyway, yeah, Africa's one of my one of those songs I always really liked, so it just kind of bugged me that they botched it like that. Uh, what's the time on your end right now? Uh, it is 9.50 in the a.m. Uh, currently, and I'm a little bit surprised because normally my kiddos get up around 9 to 9.30ish, and uh, currently they're still napping away which is a good sign that it's a Saturday. So there you go, let's go ahead and uh, enter this stronghold, see what's up. Let's see, Africa, uh, Af uh, it's, um, what's it? It, it, I mean, it's an old song from a little bit ago. It's that like, dun, 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 you know that one? That intro is pretty much unique to that one, so I'm pretty sure you know just off of that. But uh, yeah, just, just look up uh, Africa. Her Africa song. It's so good. It's so good! Also, I plan to do a little bit of training later, so I'm actually just gonna buy a bunch of key leaves. We're gonna go ahead and get like, I don't know, 30. 30 ought to do it. Uh, we'll have her max out on carrying them, and then yeah. Uh, heat leaves are your kind of premier healing item for most of the game, and they're pretty cheap to get. So we're gonna go, go ahead and do that, and now we're gonna go ahead and survive this leader, and completely gang pile the crap out of him. And uh, after that, we'll be able to kind of normalize our levels by training, see what we want to do there. Got the target. Not quite at the target. Yeah, slowly inch in here to make sure he doesn't retreat. Uh, this guy... Actually, I don't think he does retreat, now that I think about it. Alright, we're going to have you go here. I was hoping to have run into some Hawkmen at this point, because, uh... Specifically for the Zenobian border map, there's something that I wanted to do. Now, it's weird that this town was undefended, that's why I'm having my leader run up and kind of scout these woods. Don't get caught by police carrying all those, <laughs> those herbs. Yeah. Well, then again, we've got all these mountains. We could be in Denver. Yes, you know that song? Hell yeah, because Toto is really good. Interestingly, um, yeah, Toto... Uh, what was it? Uh, the hell was it called? There was a, uh, a bit that uh, Fact Fiend did a little bit ago. Um, just kind of covering the fact that, technically speaking, despite the fact that uh, Toto just seemed to kind of come out of nowhere, apparently the musicians involved were some of the biggest professionals in the industry at the time. Uh, I think they said collectively... Like, if you combine all the different things that they technically had a part in, like, they didn't... They weren't the the main like band, as it were, behind a whole lot of songs, but technically speaking, the musicians involved in it, uh, I think they said were like they, they had like 1,600 albums that they were a part of. It was some ri completely ridiculous number. 
Um, but yeah, they, they were basically backup musicians. So anytime somebody needed any kind of music or whatever else, or you know, they had some extra instrument part they wanted, they needed some extra vocals, they wanted to you know just redo part of the song, or somebody didn't show up or whatever, they would just literally call them and they would just come in and save it. Uh, let's see. Uh, six hours apart, gonna be hard finding any time slot where we might do something. Yeah, um, hmm. not sure what to do about that. And then, by the way, uh, as far as suggestions for that goes, if we if we do find a workable time slot, have you ever played Jagged Alliance? Like either either uh, JA2 or the utterly craptastic remake. Which, by the way. JA, uh, JA2 uh, BIA, as it's called. Friggin' back in action. I've yet to see anybody to, that could give me some actual redeeming factors of that game. <laughs> like, uh, other than the fact that it looked pretty and it tried to reference the original where it, you know, I guess remembered to, everything from the pre presentation to the controls to the system, which is weird because the system is really similar to this one now that I think about it. Um, but yeah. Very similar system to this one, in, in that it's like it's technically real time, but you can pause and give orders at any time. But the way that they handled it is, oh, it's really bad. It's real, real bad. Um, so you have some version of it on GOG. Oh wait, hang on. Angry Beavers got canned. The final episode talking about it. Aw, that sucks. So you saw a zombie cop trying to get into a vending machine, I feel it was a reference to RE 1.5. Also, the parking garage. That one part of the parking garage where like, you can go in and open the gate looks just like the 1.5 version. It's uncanny how good that looks. Let's see, J2 was great, never played the remake. So Jo took all the whimsy and out of the series yet. So, the remake... Here's the thing, the remake did one cardinal sin right away in which they said, okay, you know how you have Fog of War? We're just going to completely remove that. You have complete omniscience. And then people obviously got pissed about that. Like, there was some pretty palpable outrage at the time, actually. Uh, so yeah, they, they eventually put Fog of War back in. But then it turns out that the reason that they gave you total omniscience is the fact that the, like, the game is utter horse crap. The, uh, it's complete and utter nonsense, because... I guess it's arguably semi-realistic that everybody is super inaccurate, but we were talking like, JE2 had inaccuracy. That one, you literally have them sitting a few feet away, like, with, with rifles at the right range, with a clear view of somebody right in the open. They've been sitting and aiming at them for ages, and you're just sitting there, and waiting, and waiting, and waiting as it takes like 40 shots for them to hit a thing. It's... It is rough. Um, the whole destructible everything mechanic, not really around. You have certain areas that you can kind of destroy. You've got a kind of perk system that they carried over, which is pretty nice. Um, like the presentation is nice, I guess. It's just the controls are mind-bogglingly horrible. Like everything is kind of backwards from what you'd expect it to be. It's, it's bizarre. It's just straight up bizarre. Um, Cheap and always wanted to try it. Definitely would recommend it. It's uh, it's really good. All right, we got an extra seven replacement soldiers. I don't think we even took any losses this time, so perfect. Perfection. All right, and it's the ex first execution scene. And actually, wait a minute, Freddy might not be saved because this is the scene I'm thinking of where the uh, Snowbeans come in and save everyone. Huh? Maybe we can kill off Freddy. Told me your name was Obsidian Sphinx. Are you the same Obsidian Sphinx? Yeah, because that's a common name. <laughs> and he's basically saying, hey, don't take him alive. I, I need to go stab everything. It's what I do. It's how my day goes. And then he gets punched in the face, because, uh, you know, it, like, basically, this is the only time that Mr. Protagonist Man feels ballsy enough to actually go against his boss. <laughs> He's like, wait a minute, the prince is right there. I know that guy. I can pull that card at any point. I'm going to let you kick the crap out of him, but stab him's a different story. All right. Yeah, the last stage of the inspection. <laughs> yeah, that guy's there to kind of make sure that they can take over stuff. 
and it's very possible that Raid's whole background motivation, I'm not super sure on this, but I kind of get the feeling that part of his background motivation is, like, not only complete and utter uh, xenophobia, although, if you think about it in a second, he's going to be encountering a xenophobia. Har har. Um, let's see. The kick in the crotch. Is this guy Algus? Kinda. I mean, the original Algus was uh, was basically advice from Let Us Playing Together. So, so yeah, in uh, in Tactics Ogre, you had one character that basically pulled this kind of crap. And also, thank you for waiting forever, while the dude with the fanciest hair in the series comes by. It's like, dude, I'm here with all my fanciness. I even made, <laughs> even color coded my sword to match my outfit. Anyhow, um, you know, I don't know if he actually has a unique sword now that I think about it. I uh, was I getting at here? Uh, but yeah, so you had Vice and Let Us Claim Together, and it's weird because he's a character that people either really love or hate. Because he's a guy that he can either be your exact enemy, he can just completely malfunction, he can be a recruit for, for your side. It's, uh, it's weird. Yeah, I love how he just decides, let me go ahead and dodge here. And how he even manages to draw that thing so fast is anyone's guess. And yeah, he has an Ogre Blade, doesn't he? That looks exactly like the Ogre Blade. Huh. Alright, well that's weird. Now this is the worst, yeah. So like in that one, in like especially in the PSP remake, if you decide that you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna not be a complete psycho early on in the game, like if you decide that you you, you come to a point where you come to several points in the story where it's like, do you go with, you know, the faction that you're currently with? Do you go against them? Do you go for another route entirely? And if you decide to side against his faction, for example, he will completely turn on you at that point. Like, he's been your party member up to that point. He'll turn on you and he'll actually uh, shoot one of the characters you can recruit later. Which is funny, because the only way to actually recruit her is, yeah, it's a kind of burn down an entire town, and then save her two times, and then she's basically Agrius. Anyway. So, they failed to assassinate the guy, and that's the prologue done. So you believe there was multiplayer in J2, but I don't know how big it was. I don't remember either. Also, man, it is cold as crap in here. <sighs> the snow's still coming down, man. And they publicly executed some random guy. Thought of LPing the king, or for the king with someone possibly. Wait a minute. Uh, why does that sound familiar? Why does that sound familiar? That's a. It's gonna bug me. That is gonna bug me real good. Uh, actually, by the way, if you if you like strategy games and stuff. It's arguable whether it's really a strategy game, but one uh, another one I really highly recommend, just because it kind of flew under the radar in many ways, but Wasteland 2. That game is amazing. Like, I was actually considering doing a run of uh, WL2 with uh, the Zenobians from uh, from both the, what, both the games that they show up in uh, from this series. Like, specifically, uh, uh, Destin, Gilbert, and um, uh, Lands and Canopus as, as the characters, except Canopus is way too overpowered to actually emulate, so probably have Yuria in there just for the sake of having a female character in the team. Just have his sister play into that. Something like that. Obsidian Sphinx of the London, London Obsidian Sphinxes. Yeah, totally. That's That sounds like a thing that exists. <laughs> see. Gog says Jatu is single player. Yeah, it's pretty... You know what? It's possible that it got multiplayer, though. Uh, there was a fantastic... Um, so, okay, the remake, garbage, but there was a fantastic mod. Um, that just, there was some rebalance mod. I forget what it's actually called right now. But that got made a, a good while ago now. Uh, so that has a really good uh, overhaul mod. I think it was just J2 overhaul. And then on top of that, you have... What's it? Uh, you have follow tactics with the heat, um, equilibrium. And, uh, yeah, that mod is also amazing. It requires another big mod to actually uh, stick on top of it. But if you really like strategy RPGs and all that kind of thing, both of those definitely, definitely recommended. Which, I'd argue JA2 is, uh, is, you know, 
is strategy RPG. I mean, let's be honest, uh, all the characters are still kind of trying to do their roles and everything. Right, so I'm going to do a quick uh, promotion check real quick here. And then I gotta get going to check up on my kiddos to make sure everybody's uh, getting their breakfast on time and everything. Uh, we do have ninjas unlocked, so somewhere we have ninjas. Uh, is that you by chance? Who can be a ninja? <clears throat> also, my throat's getting a bit dry. Require more materials. Yeah, no, who can be a ninja? And. What is your team for some reason? They're, they're both threes as well. Huh. Alright, who can be a ninja? Weird. Okay, so this wizard can be a ninja. I'm kind of tempted to actually have him do that. Although, I wouldn't have any replacement wizards. Uh, I don't have any sorceresses. Yeah, no. Your request to be a ninja is currently denied. However, I will go ahead and remove one of your dudes here. Because until we get a dragon tamer, you are our resident dragon expert. So there we go. Little, little baby dragon. Right, we're going to have to reposition some stuff here. Um, character, okay, take away his grunts. Let's take those away. Mission wise, let's move you probably to the left a little bit. And then, let's see if we can make this work. If we stick Baby Dragon back here, can we stick these guys anywhere? Nah. Alright, well, that's his team filled out. So that's that. And alright, so that'll be. Uh, That'll be it for the moment. Um, I'm actually gonna, gonna have to go sign off for the next few hours. However, I will be back after lunch, so that'll be... Uh, let's see, we can probably do like in about two and a half hours, give or take? Something like that? Let's see, uh, for the king, it is a tile and round-based 3D RPG called multiplayer. Rubens and Seizio did a run, that's where no problem. Okay, interesting. I'm gonna have to look at, it, at that at some point. I would say I'll add it to the list, but that has been a running joke of how many freaking things I have on the dang list, um, to the point that I have completely misplaced the list and now just keep the list in my head. Anyway, so, um, let's see, I'm sure somebody's doing some sort of stuff that we want to raid right now, so let's go, let's go take a quick peek who's doing stuff, and then see if anybody's doing any, uh, any overbattle by chance? The odds of that are astoundingly slim, but maybe somebody's doing an interesting speedrun or some such. Uh, ooh. Or actually, no. Let's look at somebody doing that uh, Resident Evil 2. Because that mist looks awesome! Alright. Looks for the live ones here, and. Come on, somebody's gotta be doing a hardcore run here. Oh yeah, there we go. There's somebody doing a, uh... How do I copy your name? No. Go away, ad. Ah! Okay. Black UFA. Let's, uh, let's try to make that happen. And yeah, I will be back again in, in about two and a half hours, I think. So that's what we'll do. So, fair warning, I don't know if they, this guy is obnoxious or whatever, or who knows what. I just see that they're doing the Resident Evil 2 remake and they're doing the post-game stuff. So that shouldn't, be, shouldn't have any spoilers in it. So, thank you guys for stopping by. I will see you soon, and have an awesome one. Alright, take care.